Well, the first thing in the back of my mind is what is design? And I believe it's conception of things. Most arts, um, the design uh, is the conception. These are design students at the Yale School of Art and Architecture, working with Alvin Eisenman. Professor Eisenman is chairman of the design department at the School of Art and Architecture. The young uh, person who decides to go into the field of graphic arts is faced with the problem of relearning a great many things. And uh, while we might easily proceed to the end as a method of teaching, to the end and teach people how to deal with the professional complexities of a typical problem, and we do this, we also separate the problem for purposes of consideration by the students, one by one, the elements that go to make up graphic design. We teach people both in context of designing a book about letters and paper and the other materials that go into it, and we teach them separately. Uh, my uh, colleague, Norman Ives, whose responsibility it is specifically to deal with the problem of uh, graphic uh, design in, in letter form for the beginning students, um, assumes that they know something about art. They know how to make a picture. Uh, they know how to draw. They know how to write, and they know how to read. But the problem of putting these two things together is the crux of this particular problem I want to talk about first, and that is the problem of how you get somebody to look at a letter as a picture, how you get him to see that it has the same potential as perhaps uh, any picture on the wall, it should be, it should be pleasing, uh, dynamic, uh, it should make a satisfactory pattern to look at all in itself. And it has very complex elements which have been put there, not by the immediate person who's doing the design necessarily. These are given elements which one takes and works with. People who hire designers to do things are mostly constrained by the thought of wanting to find a person who will stamp a thing with some kind of originality and memorability. If I made something starting with Matisse's cut-out paper as a uh, model, I would have to find somewhere to go away from Matisse, take that idea and go away from Matisse toward some new direction that he hadn't explored of it. Andy Warhol had a whole shtick of ways that he was bringing fine art into commercial art. I guess you'd call it. That's what, what book jackets were, and I was looking at his portfolio to see about whether he could, we would give him a book jacket. I was then the art director of McGraw-Hill, and this is before I arrived at Yale. Couldn't help but admire his craftsmanship. It was wonderful that a person could do this kind of thing on a piece of paper. The intensity of the craftsmanship was the big thing you saw. A way of teaching that Herbert Matter used was wait till the student had proposed a problem that he had and then show him how he solved it himself. Scales and other kind of thing that you could talk about, how big should something be? And Herbert was great friends with Giacometti. Giacometti had a problem with architects who wanted to change the scale of his women 
make them bigger or smaller to fit an architectural scene. Herbert made a, a chart to show you when Giacometti himself made a big thing big or this big, what the difference was. I mean, you by showing you a thing blown up on, a, say, a film, big, beyond its size, and then what a thing looked like if the master himself had made it that size. And he, he made this chart that is one of the great documents of modern art, show you how he, at least somebody like Giacometti did it. And Herbert had learned from Giacometti's ways never to, to try to solve anything by talking about it or even to draw a principle, but just to show. Herbert, he was big on showing and small on telling. Other people are big on telling and not so big on showing. A book, and I, my interest in design is primarily books. I mean, my own work has been in books, and it's always a question with a book of how long any subject should be dealt with. And so I know that with a book, there's no other way than to do it and then t see afterwards that you should have expanded this part or shrunk that one and to be perfect. When the computer arrived in graphic design, it's possible to make a finished thing right away. And I wouldn't describe that as necessarily bad, it's new. To be able to make a book right away, I mean, uh, with a computer, Steve Jobs invented and, uh, and formulated, it became possible to do these things automatically, and we're still seeing where that leads. You really don't know how a designer is going to fit in, but certainly not in any of the patterns of the past. Anybody can set up a shop and call himself a graphic designer. What he doesn't know, or she doesn't know, what, what the person who sets up as a graphic designer nowadays doesn't know is how to think large thoughts that will last a lifetime. Message seems to be a good teacher, has a responsibility for, is alerting the student of design to think about where design has been and where it's going, or where it might go. And guess right, or guess wrong and die as a designer. <laughs> There's a very famous story about the dancer Nijinsky, and he came to talk to a great impresario of the dance and do, uh, do a little something. And so Nijinsky said to him something that dancers didn't often ask him to do. Nijinsky said, what do you want me to do to the impresario? And his famous words were, astonish me. Et ton moi. Early on in my career, um, Alan Fletcher, who died recently, and as a result of that, I've been thinking very hard about him and what he did. He always amazed me, Alan Fletcher did, by never saying anything I expected him to say. He always had a new idea a different idea than anybody would have thought of. All the times I could remember, he always surprised people. 
That, that's what made the class very, for, 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 for the teacher, for me, very lively. I can only say <clears throat> that when you're a teacher and you walk in and sit down at a class, you look around and you hope somebody's going to astonish you. That's me anyway. Astonish me 